Hello, uh, welcome to another video by uh, UConn Q Center on uh, this time a topic in linear algebra on Gauss-Jordan elimination method. The Gauss-Jordan elimination method um, to solve linear systems, which we also know as the uh, row reduction method. So just to remind you what the method is like. Um, so again, uh, it, this is used to solve uh, large uh, systems of linear equations and it's a, a very uh, efficient method. We first transform the linear system into what's called the augmented matrix. I, I'll show you examples in a moment. And then uh, we move on to reducing the, um, the, the augmented matrix using this uh, row reduction method to simplify the system to a point where I can decide, first of all, if the system is consistent, that is, if there are uh, solutions to the system, and also uh, to be able to solve the system if there, if there are solutions. So here I've listed the, uh, the three possible elementary row reduction operations where we can uh, scale, interchange, or replace. We can multiply one row by uh, one non-zero constant. We can exchange any two rows. We can interchange them. And we can also replace one row by the sum of itself and a multiple of another row. And once we've reached what's called the echelon form, I also will give you uh, examples in a moment, uh, then we find the reduced echelon form that helps uh, decide what the solutions to the original system are and decide whether there are infinitely many or only finitely many solutions. So here are two examples of matrices uh, where uh, you can see the, uh, a matrix in echelon form. Echelon form means that there are um, it's some sort of like staircase, uh, this way, staircase um, matrix where there are zeros in the lower left corner and um, once there is a non-zero entry up there, the rest are zeros. Then the next one here is a, a non-zero entry and then we have zeros below it. In here, that zero entry, um, so there would be this is what's going to be called like free variable because there are the what would be the it's called the pivot position is uh, a zero but in this row the pivot appears here and then zeros below it and uh, then the reduced echelon form is another form that is uh, upper triangular but um, where the pivot positions so the positions where there is a non-zero entry and then followed by zeros those are ones plus above pivot uh, positions there should be zeros. So this up here, this one is another um, pivot position and there's gonna be zeros all the way. And if there are rows of zeros, they have to appear at the bottom of the, um, of the matrix, both in the echelon form and the reduced echelon form. Okay, so uh, this is better explained by example, so let's try to solve a few uh, linear systems. So we begin with, um, uh, the first, uh, the very first step is uh, we need to uh, produce the augmented matrix. So the, augment the augmented matrix, we, uh, we write the coefficients of the system. You see um, the coefficients. Uh, for, in, for instance, of the last line are 1, 6, 4, 3, and that's what I copy down as my row. And that's the augmented uh, matrix for the system. And this is what I'm going to row reduce. So now uh, I row reduce, and I'm going to try to specify what are my operations. The goal uh, basically is to find, to produce as many zeros in the lower left corner of the matrix as possible. So I'm going to start by getting rid of this one. I can do three different operations. In this case, I'm going to replace this row, the second row, by itself minus, uh, by, uh, itself minus a multiple of another row. In, in this case, itself. So I'm going to replace row two by uh, itself minus R1, minus the first row, and that gives me uh, the first one is not touched. The second one will be 0, 0 minus 2 
is minus 2, minus 1, minus 1 is minus 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1. And then uh, I'm going to do in the same step, at the same time I'm also going to reduce the, the last row. I'm also going to replace uh, the last row by R3 minus R1, so I can get rid of this 1 here. So this 1 minus that 1, I get a 0. 6 minus 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. And 3 minus 1 is 2. OK. Now I have zeros below this pivot position, so this column is done. So now I move on to this uh, column. This is a non-zero entry. So there are some non-zero entries below here. So there will be a pivot position, a non-zero pivot position here. And now I just need to get rid of this four to begin with. So I'm going to uh, do that by adding, I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to do a replacement of uh, the third row by the third row plus twice the second row because uh, that will be 4 minus 4, 0. So I'll get a 0 right here. That gives me the first one is not touched. The second one is 0, minus 2, minus 2, 1. I'm not touching it. This one is 0, then 4 minus twice 2. So that's 0. 3 minus 4 is minus 1. Uh, I'm adding twice, yes, 3 minus 4 is uh, 1, and 2 plus 2 is 4. OK, very good. Then I'm going to uh, move on. Now I have, um, you see that now I have a pivot position, zeros below it, pivot position, zeros below it, and then this is the last pivot position. So this matrix is actually in uh, echelon form. A theorem actually tells me that if in the echelon form um, there are no rows where there are zeros to the left of the dotted line, uh, if there are no rows of zeros in the system matrix, then it's actually consistent and there are solutions. If there, would be, if there was a row of zeros and a zero on the right-hand side, that's also consistent. If there's a row of zeros with a non-zero entry on the right-hand side, then that's not consistent, that there are no solutions. So I know that there is going to be solutions at this point. So I'm going to try to solve it now by bringing the echelon form to a reduced echelon form. So I'm going to, to bring it to reduced echelon form. You start by um, the pivot positions have to be 1. So I'm going to scale. I'm going to do two operations here. I'm going to uh, scale. Uh, the second position, the second row, by, uh, so I'm going to, R2 is going to become R2 divided by minus 2, and R3 is going to become R3 divided by minus 1. And that's going to give me uh, 1, 2, 1, 1, 0, divided by minus 2, that's 1, minus 2 divided by minus 2 is 1, 1 divided by minus 2 is minus a half. And then um, the last one is 0. 0 divided by minus 1 is 1 divided by minus 1. 4, minus, 4 divided by minus 1 is minus 4. OK? Now the next step in the echelon form, above pivots, there should be zeros. So I'm going to remove this 1, this 1, and that 1, and that 2. So I'm going to start with uh, the uh, the numbers above the, the last pivot. So I'm going to replace R2 by R2 minus R3. And I'm going to replace R1 by R1 minus R3. And that gives me 1, 2, 0, 1 minus um, minus 4, that's 5. And then um, in here, I have 0, 1, uh, 0, and minus a half minus minus 4, that's minus half 
uh, plus 4, that's 8 halves minus a half, that's uh, 7 halves. Okay. And the last one, I don't have to touch. We're almost there. There's only one position up here that needs to be removed. So I'm going to replace R1 by R1 uh, minus 2R2 two to remove that 2. And that is uh, 1, 0, 0, and then 5 minus twice R2 is 5 minus twice 7 halves, so it's 5 minus 7, um, and that will give me minus 2. And uh, then the rest are not touched. And we're done. That's uh, the echelon form for the matrix. And now you see that, that this is the reduced echelon form. And uh, the fact that there's a pivot in every, a non-zero pivot in every column tells me that there is a unique solution. There are no rows uh, of zeros. Uh, so this is consistent, there's a unique solution, and in fact, you can see that now we can translate back this into a system, and this just says that x is minus 2, y is 7 over 2, and z is minus 4. And you can check that those, uh, those numbers satisfy the original system that was given to us. Okay, so now we are going to solve a second example where the solution is going to be a, it's a similar problem, but the solution is going to be different. Uh, in this case, there is going to be uh, infinitely many solutions instead of just uh, uh, finitely many, instead of just one. Okay, so we start like before. Uh, we do a, um, an augmented matrix for the system. The coefficients are 1, 2, 1, 1. 1, 0, minus 1, 2, and 1, 6, 5, minus 1. Here's my augmented matrix. And now I uh, start my row reduction operations. I won't write anymore what the steps are. I'll just say out loud what they are. So I begin with my, um, with my method. I have to get rid of this one. I have a non-zero number there, so I just want to clear out the numbers here. That one I can clear out by uh, subtracting. Um, I'll replace this one by this one minus that one. Let's just say, uh, let's just write it, uh, R2 minus R1. And that gives me uh, 0, uh, minus 2, minus 2, and uh, um, 2 minus 1, 1. Um, and then I'm going to replace R3 minus uh, R3 by R3 minus R1, and that gives me um, uh, zero here. Six minus two, four. Five minus two, five minus one, four. And minus one minus one minus two. Okay. So far so good. Now I keep going, and I'm going to remove uh, these four. Uh, like before, uh, let's just uh, move over here. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to replace the fourth, the fourth row, not the fourth row, but the third row. Uh, the third row by the third row minus, uh, or rather twice the second row. And that gives me um, one, two, one, one. 0, minus 2, minus 2, 1 like before, and then 0, um, 0, 4, uh, plus twice the above, that's 0, and minus 2, plus 2, I get 0. So now, uh, this, is, uh, this is the echelon form, this is a echelon form, for the matrix, and uh, what I see is that there is a row of zeros. Uh, in the system matrix, there is a row of zeros, but it comes with a zero in the augmented matrix 
um, and that tells me that this is consistent. The only row of zeros here comes with a zero there, so this is still a consistent system. So there are solutions. Now what I need to do is uh, make this into a, a reduced echelon form. So I'm first simplify this to be a, um, a one, so I scale it. Uh, this is then a one, a one, and minus a half. And here I still have zeros. And uh, remove that two using this pivot. So I have uh, one. Uh, I'm going to subtract to this one, subtract twice um, uh, this line. So R1 is going to be R1 minus two R2. That is uh, a zero. 1 minus 2 uh, is minus 1, and 1 minus um, twice this, 1 minus twice minus a half, that's 1 plus 1, 2. Okay, and then I have 0, 1, 1 minus a half, and then zeros. And that's as much as I can do above pivots. I have zeros as well as below. And uh, this, um, this is the um, uh, reduced echelon form. Um, and uh, what this tells me, again, it's a consistent uh, system. And um, because there are columns with no pivot positions, this, uh, if this was like before, uh, non-zero entry, there will be uh, a unique solution. But because this column has no pivot, um, it means that this is a free variable. So remember, this corresponds to x, to y, and z, and that is one free variable. So there's going to be infinitely many uh, solutions to this system. Um, so let's see how do you find, how do you parameterize these solutions? Uh, you first go back to the original system, so to the, to the variables, this says x minus z is 2, and uh, y plus z is minus a half. And the last equation is just a consistency check, that says that 0 equals 0. And uh, now, again, z is the free variable, so I'm going to write all the uh, equations all the variables in terms of the free variable z. So z is just z. Um, y is uh, minus a half minus z. And x is 2 plus z. Okay, so that tells me that this is a solution for any value of z, and um, so in other words, the solutions are 2 plus z minus a half uh, minus z comma z for any z. So there you go, that's the solution for the system. Uh, this is the complete solution set. Um, of the uh, original system of equations. And uh, as I said, from the form, uh, from the reduced echelon form, the fact that um, this row is all zeros tells me it's consistent. And the fact that there is one column with no pivot, there is no one there, that tells me there is one, at least one free variable that says there will be infinitely many solutions and not just a unique solution.